I purchased my first Prusa Mini secondhand about a year ago, and when I got it, I primarily used it for printing with PETG, which it did a great job with. When I finally switched over to PLA, I ran into a fair amount of issues, with the main one being just inconsistency with extrusion. At the time, I posted about it on Twitter because I knew a lot of people I followed had the Prusa Mini, and the results I got were fairly mixed. Some of them had no issues and it had printed great with PLA and PETG, while others said that they also had to swap out the heat break for the Bontech heat break, and some recommended going as far as swapping out the extruder for the Prusa Mini Bontech extruder. When I picked up my Fleurcam Zeront, who is an awesome Modbot Army community member and moderator in the Discord, recommended that I test the initial or the stock heat break using the Fleur Cam, and then swap it over to the Bontech and test it out to see if we're able to see any differences. So in today's video, we're going to run a couple of PLA prints with the stock heat break so that we can then weigh those same prints printed again with the Bontech heat break to check for under extrusion. And we will go ahead and heat up both of the heat breaks and take a look at them under the thermal camera to see if we're able to see any differences between the two. I've been wanting to do this since I got the camera about four or five months ago. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before diving in, I also wanted to mention that I picked up a brand new Prusa Mini this past November from Prusa directly, and I have not had any issues with printing PLA on that printer. So I don't know if something with the heat break has changed from this one to the newly manufactured one, or whether it's something to do with the thermal compound, but the issues I've had with this one have not reflected on the brand new Prusa Mini. The first thing I did was print out two models. One of them was the classic Benchy print, and another was a much flatter piece from the Engravenator, which is the diode laser engraver that I had assembled and built, which was actually one of the main parts I remember first seeing having the under extrusion issues with, so I figured that would be a great part to print out again and see if we can catch that under extrusion happening. Both models were sliced with the exact same settings in Prusa Slicer, and they were both printed out with Polymaker's yellow Polyterra filament. And of course, just like when you take a car to a mechanic that makes an occasional sound, it performs beautifully. And I, when I picked this up off of the build plate, looked at it, and I was trying to see if I could see any of that under extrusion that I was previously seeing, and I couldn't see any of it. Both the Benji and this flat part look amazing, and I, I should have figured as much that that was going to be the way this was going to go. Granted, when I did have the issues printing with this Prusa Mini and all the PLA parts, I did live a thousand miles away with a different level of humidity, but I'm not convinced that that had any sort of contributing factor to the issues that I was seeing when printing with PLA. Next, I busted out the Fleur Cam and set the hot end temperature to 230 Celsius. I let it reach temp and sit for a few minutes, but with the heat sink and heat sink fan pulling heat away, it was difficult to see any form of heat creep happening. So I loosened the three set screws holding the heat break in place, dropped the heat break with the heater block out, and then set the temperature once again to 230 Celsius. This made it much easier to see what was going on because there was no heat sink or no active cooling fan pulling heat away from the heat break, and it quickly warmed up to right about the point where the threads are on the heat break, and then after about another minute, the heat had crossed over those threads and you can see the rest of the heat break sort of glowing in a very similar or close to temperature that the rest of the heat break and heater block was in. Now it was time to install the Bontech heat break. Originally I was going to film the whole swap process, but there was a video as well as excellent documentation on this and this wasn't meant to be a how to install the Bontech heat break on your Prusa Mini video, so I decided to just do the swap on my own. Before using the floor camera on the heat break, I removed the PTFE tube that was inside of it and I didn't apply any of the thermal compound at this point because the stock Prusa heat break that I pulled out didn't have really any thermal compound it looked like and I wanted to have just metal to metal without any sort of outside factor to see how well it was able to keep the heat in the hot zone and keep the heat away from the cold zone. Heating the hot end once again at 230 Celsius, it initially looked very similar with the Bontech heat break, but I was very quickly able to see that the heat was having a more difficult time crossing over the threads. The stock Prusa heat break has large threads that go all the way up to the smooth portion of the heat break, while the Bontech has a much smaller meeting point between the threads and the rest of the heat break to divide the hot zone and the cold zone up. With the thermal camera and seeing both in front of me, it was clear to see that the Bontech design of having less metal between the cold zone and the hot zone, instead of having the exact same 
width was definitely a superior design and the heat had a harder time crossing over into the cold zone. After adding thermal compound to the heat break and installing it into the heat sink, I ran the exact same two prints using the exact same G-code. Print quality looked near identical, and when it came down to the moment of truth, yes, I bought a small food scale for this video so that way I could measure in grams the differences between the printed parts. Both the benches, as well as both the larger flat parts, had the exact same weight. Seeing the quality of the parts with the stock heat break, I probably could have guessed that the weight was going to be near identical. I had hoped that I was going to be able to re replicate that under extrusion I was seeing before, but that clearly was not the case. Either way, I'm glad to have the Bontech heat break installed, and I did pick up a second one just in case the new Prusa Mini that I have starts to show similar under extrusion or issues with printing PLA that I had seen on this one before. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and it was really fun to use the FLIR camera again. We used it last on the draft shields, and everyone seemed to really enjoy it, so it was cool to take this out. And again, although it didn't show the under extrusion like I was expecting. Still seeing the two heat breaks with the Bontech one and being able to see the heat struggle to jump across the narrow throat is really cool and just helps to paint a picture of what's actually going on when the hot end is heating up and the heat breaks really important job of keeping the cold zone cold and the hot zone hot. I've used this Prusa Mini for quite a few PETG projects and hopefully going forward, I won't have any more issues with PLA. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.